Bob Ledbetter here again with percussion, uh, talking about the drum set. Uh, today's topic um, is going to be jazz uh, comping on the snare drum. Oh, I'm sorry, on the drum set, basically. Um, let's talk about what that means. Comping is something that's done by the in the rhythm section of jazz jazz uh, combo or big band by the typically by the piano player, guitar player, possibly vibraphone player, and drummer. Uh, while the bass player is laying down the walking bass line or whatever the bass line might be. Um, a different type of comping for him, but um, more uh, about the bass line. Um, so the drummer and what these, what the piano player, guitar, or drummer do um, is uh, improvised pretty much. And, um, and they, 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 follow s they follow similar principles. But first, let's just talk about what comping means. So um, if you take the COMP of comp and put it in a company, that's one thing we're doing is accompanying the other musicians. Or another uh, word to put it with is complement. So accompany me or a complement the musicians you're playing with um, or behind, basically, right? Um, so most of the time when you're comping in jazz, um, your ride cymbal and your hi-hat are continuous. And then you'll play comping figures on your snare drum um, and possibly your bass drum. And then as you get more advanced as a player, you might also e incorporate the hi-hat as well in figures. Um, so let's just talk about what co good comping would be, um, should be. Uh, so comping should enhance the groove. Make sure whatever you're doing should enhances the overall groove of the, the band you're playing with. Uh, not distract from it, okay? Uh, secondly, it should add variety to what's happening in the music um, so that you're keeping the interest and keeping people inspired, other players you're playing with, and keeping things interesting. Um, thirdly, uh, you're going to support and or stimulate the soloist that you're playing with. <coughs> some soloists really like a lot of, uh, from my experience, some like a lot of information coming from the drummer. Um, and, you know, it depends on who you're playing with. Um, you can, you know, once you get to know people, then you know how they like to interact. Uh, so it's either s support the soloist or stimulate. W and when you say stimulate, when I say stimulate, I'm talking about playing figures that will feed them rhythmic ideas and stuff like that that you can play off, of, you know. And jazz is an impro improvised type of music, so <coughs> a lot of inspiration is being traded around between the players. And then the final... Um, thing that comping should do is um, you can you can basically respond to other uh, band members so let's say you know um, piano player plays something you can respond to that um, I've heard the term three C's used for uh, for this kind of thing um, copy so let's say a piano player plays a figure you could play the figure to copy that person um, another would be to um, complement so play something that complements that what they're playing and then other would be contrast so you could do something like opposite of what they're doing or maybe fill in the holes from what they're doing um, all right so the let's talk about how to get started with this um, uh, I did another video about the ride pattern and of course um, once you've once you've um, you know become accomplished at the ride pattern and the hi-hat and uh, what we call feathering the bass drum, which is a very light bass drum to go along with the walking bass line. Once you've got that going, then the next step is to start learning to comp. And again, it's not, it's an improvised thing. It's not a beat that's repetitive like in rock, rock music, for instance. So start, let's just start with the uh, establishing the, the ride pattern, hi-hat, and bass drum. So within that framework, then you're going to play, whatever you play on snare drum needs to balance with the overall drum set. Um, what you don't want to do is play really loud hits on the snare drum that would be more in line with like a rock groove. You want that snare drum stuff to, you know, that you're playing here to fit in with the overall sound of what you're playing on the cymbals and bass drum. <laughs> Okay, 
Um, one thing, like I said, avoid playing two and four. The only time you play two and four really is if you're playing a shuffle. So when you're playing a shuffle, do play two and four. A shuffle, though, is, is a groove that, that's very repetitive, um, and it, it's a great groove. Uh, a lot of big band tunes are shuffles. Um, there's some shuffles in small group jazz as well. Um, but in a shuffle, of course, you're not going to do nearly as much comping because you're playing this constant groove. Yeah, so a shuffle um, basically is something like this. <laughs> That kind of thing, of course, um, is a steady groove, and you maintain that. Um, but for much of jazz, um, it's a lot more freedom in your left hand. Um, so let's talk about how to get started with um, learning to do this. Um, a lot of young players play comping in between the ride pattern, um, which is OK. But you don't want to get stuck in a rut of always playing the same kind of comping. So you want to develop a, a repertoire or the ability to play almost you know, any kind of rhythm that you're hearing around you on your snare drum while playing the ride pattern. So in order to, to develop that ability, you, you should practice a variety of different um, uh, eighth note swung, eighth note patterns, etc. Um, of course, all these patterns that you play should sound like what a horn player or other jazz musician would do in their phrasing. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but let's just start with how um, just a, a starting point would be simply playing the ride pattern and work on playing the and of one. So and again, an and of one in swing is, is the equivalent of the third note of a triplet, right? Or do la, do la, do one, two, three, four, one, OK? Make sure you know that. All right, so uh, we'll start with that. So I'm going to go through uh, basically playing the and of one, then the and of two, and of three, and then, and then the and of four. And just practice that, uh, each one of those, several times over and over again until you feel comfortable with it. So here's the and of one. I'll play a couple of bars of time first. Here we go. And one, and. One, and. Now the end of two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. And a four, two, three, four, and. Okay, so that's the first step is to learn to feel comfortable playing those those um, the, the upbeats and then of course then you can play a couple of them in a row let's say one and two the end of one and of two or and of two and three one two one two one two All right, so um, you can move those around wherever, wherever uh, the music calls for or you're inspired to play. So then the next step would be to add another eighth note, uh, add eighth notes to that. Um, of course, you can, you know, I'm, I'm implying that you don't play downbeats. Um, that's not true. Downbeats, of course, work as well, and you can play figures that will incorporate, be around the uh, downbeat. Let's say, let's say we add the downbeat now. So now it would be one and or two and, or three and, or four and. In order to swing, though, you have to do it the way that a horn player or, you know, um, non-drummers phrase these uh, type of rhythms. So like uh, when they a horn player th thinks of two eighth notes on one, they're going to go something like do dot, do dot. The second note gets more weight, so make sure you swing. That's called, that's a, sw a way of swinging the rhythm. So let's Try that. Two, two, three, four. Two, uh, two dot. Two dot. Now let's do it on two. One, two dot. One, two dot. One, two dot. Two dot. Then on three. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, two dot. One, two, two dot. Then on four. One, two, three. Two, Okay, so that's um, 
There's a book by Steve Houghton, uh, Studio Big Band Drumming, excellent book. Um, in there he talks about, it mentions um, the eighth note rule. An eighth note rule meaning that whenever you have um, more than one eighth note in succession, if you're playing comping, then you always accent the last one. So in that case, there's just two eighth notes, you accent the second one. Let's say if we do three eighth notes, it always, you'd still add, uh, so you'd still accent the last one. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add a pickup to one. So it'll be uh, uh, something like ba do dot one, two, three, four, ba do dot three, four, ba do dot. So that's adding another accent in front of the one and. Okay, we'll try that. One, two, three, four. Ba do dot. Ba do dot. then you could move that around. So do it on two, three, and four. So here's on two. One, two, three, four, one, two. Put it on three. One, two, three. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's, again, the eighth note rule. If you have more than um, one eighth note, wait to accent the last one. Um, especially if it is a uh, offbeat. Um, okay, so that's just a good rule of thumb to keep in mind. Uh, the next thing you can do now, all this whole time I've been feathering the bass drum. Uh, again, the feathering the bass drum is a really good way to kind of lock in with the bass player and also keep your time really uh, together. Um, but then you can start using the bass drum as well um, as part of your comping. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put, well, first of all, I would practice all of those same things on the bass drum. Um, so, and, and the reason why you should, well, first of all, practice this stuff by yourself is work on the coordination involved um, because you're going to try to, you're gonna now going to be doing bass drum on off beats. Your bass drum is now going to um, function kind of melodically, um, whereas in a lot of rock grooves, you're playing a lot of down beats and um, things like that, but if you've done a much funk drumming, for instance, your bass drum's pretty active there. Um, but keep in mind, again, though, that when you play bass drum in this se setting, it's got to complement the overall sound of the drum set, so you don't want to overplay the bass drum. Um, for this, I highly recommend keeping your heel down, and that keeps your, your legs nice and relaxed, and you can have much better control of the volume of the bass drum with the heel down. So now I'm just going to do um, bass drum. So if you practice bass drum, it'd be one and, and, one and, one and, then and up to two, and, one, two, and, one, two, and a three, one, two, three. And a four, two, three, four, and. When you play the and of two and the and of four on snare drum or bass drum, make sure that you're lining up that note with your skip beat in the ride pattern. That's a two, three, a four, a four, a one, sorry. So make sure that you're, you're lining things up. So it'd be. Same thing with the bass drum. they line up um, and you're you know you're kind of your ride pattern super important because it establishes the feel of the entire drum set and for everyone in the band um, really work hard on getting a really good swinging ride pattern uh, okay now we're gonna try let's say uh, you could do the do dot on the bass drum but another nice way of um, is it of using the bass drum is using it in a kind of conversation back and forth between the snare drum so we could do boo dot, just bass snare. Or the other way around. And then we can play uh, figures of three note figures, like. Uh, So I'm taking that three note figure and just moving around the snare and bass. 
Another cool thing, to, well, first of all, I've, I've listed um, at the bottom of this video, I've listed three excellent method books that I recommend to, that you get to work on this. Um, the Pickering, John Pickering book is a really great starter book to learn. And by the time you get to the back of that book, it's very challenging with lots of triplet things and you're or incorporating snare, bass, and hi-hat. Uh, another great book is the Masters of Drummer's Masters of Time book by Steve Davis. Um, that is actually transcriptions of famous drummers playing time, and it is recording with it, so you can play along, do a play along with that. That's really, really helpful. That way you're trying to emulate these great drummers, and you can actually see written down what they play. Um, and then uh, The Art of Bop Drumming by John Riley, uh, highly gr regarded book. A lot of it's used all over the world uh, for learning to play jazz. Uh, that would be the next one I would get to. Um, so another thing you can do is uh, take a tune, let's say straight note chaser or something like that, and then um, what you can do with that is just play like the last, like outline it a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is um, sing the tune while I'm playing, and I'm going to just play like the last note of each um, rhythmic phrase. So, you know, it's, b it's basically ba do 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 ba ba do ba do ba do ba ba do 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 ba do ba do ba ba do ba do ba do ba do ba do ba. So I'm gonna just do that while playing time on the snare drum. Here we go. Ba do ba do ba ba do 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 ba do ba ba do 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 ba do 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 ba do 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 ba. So, if, but just doing that um, is all you need to do sometimes. And um, as a, you know, that's an example of taking a tune and just kind of outlining it on the snare drum. Let's say you've got a soloist who's playing and he's playing similar lines you can also outline his lines along with him. You know, it's very, uh, you have to be very attentive and really listen closely to who you're playing with and try to catch what the, some of their phrasing that they're doing, but that's the kind of idea you can use. Um, and then you can be a little busier, you could play uh, like the first beginning of a line, uh, beginning of a rhythmic uh, figure and the end. So then it might, might be something like this. So you can start adding more notes. You have to be careful that you don't get too busy. So you have to leave space for other players, but um, that's another next step. And of course, then you could get really busy with it and start using the bass drum as well. Just actually practicing that on your own without other musicians is just a great way to take a melody and use it on the drum set and it makes you more musical it makes you keeps you connected to the melody and the music you're playing um, so the next thing the next step after you've worked on eighth notes for a while would be the the next uh, step would be adding triplets into your playing and that's a little bit more advanced and that would be something you'd want to work out on your own again the Pickering book has and the uh, all three of those books have examples. Um, again, I think the Pickering is the best way to start with. I would start with that one before I looked at the other ones. And then, you know, when you a start adding triplets, then it starts to be more busy and more advanced co uh, um, coordination issues. So stuff like. <laughs> bit more busier playing so it's a little bit more advanced level so I wouldn't get to that right off the bat I would work my way up to it by working your eighth note playing first if you're gonna um, a comp behind players playing other styles besides besides swing um, you have a lot less leeway for comping let's say you're doing a bossa nova <laughs> something like that there's a lot less you're going to be able to do um, because you're playing a pattern um, 
on the snare. You can um, adjust your pattern to the other players a little bit. Um, for, you know, for one thing, the bossa nova does not have to remain that pattern over, over and over throughout. Um, so for instance, get more, get more creative with your left hand there to go behind soloist. you can throw in the toms a little bit to support the soloist a little bit as well. Um, samba, um, you've got a little bit more leeway there, but again, you've got a lot going on. So um, basically, you're similar to jazz. You're going to have uh, you're going to have your bass drum constant and your ride pattern constant, and your hi hat constant, but then your left hand can be more um, free to um, accompany the soloist. So a samba, uh, let's say we're going to do a straight, straight samba. to talk about comping without actually having someone to accompany. So I'm uh, just imagining playing behind a soloist with that style. Um, so rock, music, funk, um, less comping involved again because you're playing a repeated pattern. And what you're going to do there mostly is play fills or kicks. Um, same thing with a shuffle. Um, and uh, so yeah, I think that that's uh, just another thing to, to be thinking about. And when you play brushes, uh, I'm going to do another another video on brushes. But brushes, the same ideas apply um, to play comp figures behind soloists. Um, in other words, you can play uh, improvise responses and you know in, in, um, you know interact with the soloists and other players on brushes as well. Um, the difference, of course, is you've got this pattern that you're doing, and you have to squeeze that into the pattern. But you can, um, in brushes, use your bass drum more and your hi hat more to interact with with uh, who you're playing with. Um, we're doing another video with the rhythm section uh, joint video, and in that video, um, we'll be talk. I'll be talking more, a little bit more specifically about how a drummer can change what he's doing depending on what the other players are doing. Um, and then also uh, change the way you play depending on who you're playing behind. So if you're playing behind a trumpet player, it's a lot different than playing behind a piano player. Um, the volume's going to be a little bit different. It, it's nice to change your colors, like switch to a different ride cymbal for a different soloist or a different part of the tune. So if you're like a, a B section of a tune, it's a good time to switch your, to a different ride cymbal to change the colors up a little bit. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, and uh, um, if you have any questions, my email is listed below. I'm happy to address any questions you have. And uh, thank you so much for listening today. <laughs>